This morning we'd like to draw your attention to verses 8 and 9 of Psalm 107. Where the psalmist declares, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. The human body is like a finely tuned machine. And the proper function depends upon certain balances being maintained. These body balances are known as the hemiostasis. And God has designed within the body certain monitoring systems that monitor the vital functions of the body. These monitoring devices are known as the body drives. They warn us when the oxygen level is getting low, when the moisture level is getting low, when the nutrient level is getting low. And these help keep our bodies finely tuned. The whole purpose, of course, is the maintenance of the human body and the procreation of the human race. Now, the sociologists maintain that as well as there being certain biological and physiological needs, that there also are certain sociological needs or drives that also are important to life itself. And they point out how every one of us have a tremendous need for love. And they show through experimentation how babies deprived of the human touch and of cuddling and all in the first six months either die or suffer irreparable mental retardation. And the importance of touch, the importance of love, the importance of, of being loved, of being needed, uh, and they talk about these sociological needs of man, the need for security and the need for attention, how people hunger for attention, thirst for love. Now, we being body and soul sometimes try to separate the body from the soul. But yet they are so integrated that whatever affects one part of you affects all of you. Sometimes when you are complaining a lot, people will say, that's just in your head. And, and they'll, they'll try to tell you that your problems aren't real problems. They are just imagined problems. It's just something in your head. But let me tell you something. If it's in your head, it's going to affect you. Uh, whatever affects you mentally will affect you physically. In fact, some psychologists seek to uh, attribute as much as 90% of the biological illnesses to mental attitudes, to the mind, to the way you process information or to the way you feel or your attitude towards things. It does affect us and can affect us physically. And so there is that tie between the body and the mind. Uh, in the psalm here, in verse 5, he indicates that tie. He said, hungry and thirsty. And he's talking there of a physical hunger and a physical thirst that they were experiencing as they were passing through the wilderness, through the desert areas. They experienced a physical and a, a, a physical hunger and thirst, but he points out how that it affected them emotionally. Uh, the, the physical needs affected the way they thought and how that 
it uh, caused them, uh, their soul fainted within them, and they were distressed. So that the physical aspects can affect my mental aspects. The mental can affect the physical. If you have the flu physically, you've got a virus that's in your system causing a fever, causing the aches and all. It affects you mentally. You feel miserable. You don't feel like getting up and running around. You just feel like dying. And, and, and it just it causes you to just feel miserable, though it is a physical virus. If you have a broken leg, you don't feel like running. It affects you physically, whatever affects you. Uh, and, and mentally, you just don't feel like getting out and playing football with a broken leg. Uh, it affects the way you uh, think, your attitude towards things. There's some kind of an inner check. When you've got a broken bone, it just says, hey, don't try it. You know, it, There's just that inner check, and, and it affects you mentally. So this integrated system of body and soul so that what affects one part of me affects all of me, and yet they are separate and distinct. And even as there are certain body appetites or biological needs, there are also the mental appetites or needs, the sociological drive. And the one cannot be satisfied with the other. That is, I cannot satisfy a physical thirst with a mental experience. I cannot satisfy a physical hunger with a mental experience. Now, I know that you've heard that when a person is really in love, they lose their appetites. So that you're not hungry anymore. I'm in love, you know, and don't want to eat, you know. But that will only last so long. <laughs> as soon as the nutrient level of the body starts getting really low, your little monitoring device is going to send the message to your brain, you better get something to eat, and you'll soon be eating again. It's only a temporary disorder and dysfunction uh, of the body. Uh, this really is one of the real problems with Buddhism. Buddha correctly taught that man's problems stem basically from his physical desires, that these desires that control men keep him in a state of distress, anxiety, fears, striving. All of the problems really can be traced back to our physical desires. And thus he taught that the answer for man was to become free of his physical desires, to become free of the physical realm and to live in a pure spirit realm, which he called nirvana. The total divorcing of yourself from the physical, material desires and needs, entering into just pure spirit realm, you enter into nirvana, where everything is blissful and peace and, and just this, you know, ethereal nirvana experience. But that is why if you ask a Buddhist if he has attained nirvana, he'll always say no. But he's striving towards it. He fasts often in order to try to wean his body away from the need for food. He hopes that one day he will be so divorced from the physical that he won't be hungry anymore and won't have to eat anymore. But that physiologically is an impossibility. And thus 
Buddhism doesn't really work. It doesn't bring you into this blissful state because there is within us that basic need of the physical for food and for water. And you cannot live in a pure spirit realm while you're still in this body. So as long as you are living in a body, you are going to have those body drives that are seeking to be satisfied. And uh, thus, those desires that arise from the purely biological, physiological makeup of the human body. Now, the mistake that people are often making is the endeavor to fill the needs of the soul with a physical experience. Jesus, when he met the woman of Samaria there at the well of Jacob, said to her an important truth. Talking of the physical, he said, if you drink of this water, you will thirst again. And that must be said of every physical experience. It cannot bring lasting satisfaction. You may drink of that water, but you can be sure that you are going to thirst again. There is only one answer for the thirst of man's soul, and that is a meaningful relationship with God that can only be found through Jesus Christ. As the psalmist said, they wandered in the wilderness and hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Some of you have been wandering through a wilderness. The wilderness of this world in which we live. And you find that deep down inside, your soul is thirsty. There is a hunger. You haven't been able to satisfy it. Some of you have drunk from the wells of the world but you are thirsting again. You've tasted of success and pleasure, but you found that it didn't satisfy. You've made the disco circuit and the party routine, but you're still thirsty. There is something within that is still craving and desiring more. The question is what can I do that will bring to me lasting satisfaction? Look at the words of the text, verse 9. For he satisfieth the longing or the thirsty soul, and he filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Taking it now over into the realm of the spirit from the flesh. He satisfies the longing soul. He fills the hungry soul with goodness. Let me assure you of this. Your flesh can never be satisfied no matter how much you feed it, you'll always get hungry again. You ever push yourself away from the table at Thanksgiving and said, I never want another bite to eat as long as I live? <laughs> you know, there's absolutely no room for any more. And, and at that moment, I think that you're genuinely sincere. You really don't want another bite of food. 
But come evening, <laughs> there you are back in the kitchen, you know, putting the whipped cream on the pumpkin pie and <laughs> just going for a little snack, you know. Because no matter how much you feed the flesh, you're always going to be hungry for more. There are some people who may find excitement in looking at a picture of a nude woman. It's very titillating, very exciting. They get aroused. But soon, just looking at the picture of a nude woman isn't exciting anymore. You need something that's more explicit to bring you the same amount of excitement. Because the flesh is never satisfied no matter how much you feed it. And you go into more and more types of uh, pornography until you become a, a sadomasochist. And finally, you're going up Harbor Boulevard to try to... Uh, actualize the fantasies that you've developed in your mind. And then you find yourself miserable and empty. It was unfulfilling. Because reality can never live up to fantasy. And, and one day you wake up with AIDS. And, and you find that your lust have destroyed you, but they did not satisfy. Look at what Solomon has to say in Proverbs chapter 7, how he so aptly describes uh, how people are searching uh, to find satisfaction and fulfillment in fleshly things, but how they ultimately, rather than satisfy, destroy. He begins the proverb by Proverb 7 by saying, Son, listen to my words. Store up my commandments. Keep them that you might live. That they might keep you, verse 5, from the strange woman and from the stranger who will flatter you with her words. I was looking out of the window of my house, and I beheld among the simple ones, I discerned there among the youths, a young man who was void of understanding, or he was stupid. <laughs> and he was passing through the streets near her corner, and he went the way to her house. It was in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and the dark of night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and subtlety of heart. Oh, she's loud and she's stubborn. Her feet do not abide in her house. Now she is without. She's in the streets. She's lying wait on every corner. And so she caught him and she kissed him. And with an impudent face she said to him, Oh, I've made my peace offerings this day. I've paid my vows. Therefore, I've come to meet you, and I've diligently sought your face until I found you. I've prepared my bed with perfumes. Come, let's take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. And with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield and with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. And he goes after her immediately, just like an ox that is going to the slaughter, or as a fool who is going to the correction of the stocks, until a dart strikes through his liver. He's contracted a venereal disease. And as a bird hastes to the snare, and knows not that it's his life. Hearken now unto me, therefore, O ye children, attend to the words of my mouth. Don't let your heart decline to her ways, nor 
Go astray to her past, for she has cast down many wounded. Yes, many strong men have been destroyed by her, for her house is on the path to hell. So it is. The flesh can never be satisfied. You give in to an area of the flesh, and rather than satisfying, it's always demanding more until it brings you into bondage. Bondage that destroys. In our text again, verse 11, Because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. They were brought down in their heart with labor. They fell and there was none to help. They were brought into darkness, into the shadow of death. And that's just exactly where flesh will lead you. Into bondage, into darkness, into the shadow of death. A person may get a high by smoking marijuana. And he might enjoy that high that he gets with marijuana. But the thing is, the flesh will demand more. And soon the high from marijuana isn't enough, and you start seeking a high from coke. And from coke to crack. And on and on, until it gets a hold on your life, until, as he said, the fool has been brought to the stock. And you find yourself locked, held in the stocks, so to speak, a victim. And you find yourself in a bondage that is destroying you, and you can't get free. For the flesh is never satisfied, nor can the flesh be satisfied. If you give yourself over to the flesh, it will always demand more and more until you are bound and destroyed. Only Jesus can satisfy the hunger and your thirst for God. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by me. Only Jesus can satisfy that thirst in your soul for God. One day, as Jesus was standing on the Temple Mount, he called out to the thousands of people who had gathered there for the Feast of Tabernacles. And he said to them, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. For he who drinks of the water that I give, out of his innermost being there will begin to flow rivers of living water. Jesus was talking about that universal thirst in the soul of man for God. That thirst that David spoke about when he said, "My, As the deer pants after the water brook, so pants my soul after thee, O God. My soul pants for the living God. And he speaks about the, the, the thirst in his soul for God. And, and that is something that all man experiences. But the problem is you try to satisfy that thirst with physical, fleshly experiences, and it just doesn't work. It only leads you into bondage and death. Only Jesus Christ can bring to you a meaningful relationship with God that will satisfy the thirst of your soul, the hunger of your heart. Again, in John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger again. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus is saying, I'm the answer. 
Your soul is thirsting after God. I'm the answer. I'm the bread of life. Partake of me, you'll never hunger again. Believe in me, you will never thirst. The psalmist said, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. satisfies the thirsty soul, fills the hungry soul with goodness. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you that we have found that satisfaction in Jesus Christ. Our hungry souls have been satisfied. Our thirsty souls have been filled. Oh, we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your wonderful works to the children of men in filling our lives, Lord, with your fullness, satisfying the thirsty soul. Through Jesus Christ, amen. All of us today are walking either the path of the flesh or the path of the spirit. The path of the flesh is leading you down into bondage and death. The path of the spirit leads you upwards into life, eternal life, full, rich life, life more abundantly, a satisfying life. For the flesh can never be satisfied. It will only demand more and more until you're destroyed by it. Only serving Jesus Christ can bring lasting satisfaction. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for he has provided for the thirsty soul and the hungry heart. Today, maybe you are in the bondage of iniquity. Maybe you find yourself in the stocks, so to speak. Maybe you've been hooked by pornography. Maybe it's an addiction with you now. It has a hold on your life and it's, and it's destroying you and you can see it's destroying and you know it is. But you somehow just can't get free. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's drugs that are destroying you and they have you in their grip and they're leading you down to destruction. I thank God God, that I can declare to you as a minister of Jesus Christ that if you will turn your life over to Jesus, he will set you free from that which is destroying you. Oh, more than that, he'll bring you satisfaction. He'll fill your thirsty soul. I would encourage you, go back to the prayer room. And there find the power of God to deliver you from the power of darkness and to bring you into the glorious full richness of a life in Jesus Christ. May the Lord be with you and bless you and keep you as you walk in fellowship with him this week. May his love fill your heart and may you share that love with others in Jesus' name.